Welcome back, everybody, with the latest news that online learning will continue in many Ontario cities. Questions are rising. One thing we need to keep our eye on, friends, is what all this screen time is doing to all the children on screens eight hours a day. Joining us now to explain more is optometrist Dr. Ivy Coe. Good morning, doctor. So good to have you here. Good morning, Dina. I'm reading, me. I'm reading a ton of articles saying that there has been an uptick in uh, some problems arising in kids as of March 2020 when the pandemic began. Would you say that's true too with your practice? Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot more kids come in, uh, parents being concerned about how much time their kids are having on the screen and the impact on their visual development. Okay. We're seeing a lot of uh, kids that, um, well, a, 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 a trend that we've been concerned about before the pandemic um, is myopia, a condition called myopia, that uh, with screen time, it really has progressed a lot faster than we're used to. So how does it work? Because I know my husband was saying to me, it's too close, right? So is it, it, does yeah. that matter? If it's closer to your eye, does it make things worse? Absolutely. So if it's too close, you have to think of it like your eye muscles are working that much harder to focus for extended periods of time. And when the muscles get tired, things start to look blurry, and that could signal the eye to make changes that they wouldn't normally, like getting longer, which is what causes myopia to progress. Okay, so how do parents know if there's a problem? How do you identify it? Are there certain signs? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of kids, when they do have trouble seeing, um, it's distance that can be blurry. So they'll start squinting, or you might see them tilting their head. Um, they might even start rubbing their eyes as well. Um, and we've had a lot of kids as well uh, have issues with uh, dry eyes, mm -hmm. they'll start keeping their eyes blinking excessively. Um, so it's always good to reach out to your local optometrist and ask those questions, bring them in. And what can we do to limit these problems from starting in the first place? What are some tips and tricks? So for the patients I've seen in my practice, uh, one of the things we have in our control is how much time we get outside. So if we can get at least 90 minutes a day for these kids to spend outdoors, the natural light is important. It's still good to wear UV protection to protect their eyes from any UV damage, but getting time outside is really a good idea. Interesting. Um, second, does it have yeah, to be second, 90 minutes total, or can you break it up 30, 30, 30, or whatever, 45 minutes? It doesn't matter if it's an entire block? No, you can break it up. But, uh, you know, the problem with the pandemic is we're spending uh, more time looking up at screens and not really getting outside. So mm. uh, COVID has made the uh, kind of period of time the last year really ripe for my bit to progress. I know there used to be the 20, 20, 20 rule. So 20 minutes on your screen, then 20 seconds looking at least 20 feet away. But that's tough to do in virtual learning, right? Yes, absolutely. So and nothing's ideal. It's really tough for parents. There's a lot on our plate right now. I have two young kids as well. Um, but, you know, doing the simple things like getting outside is a good idea. If they do love to read, it's still good to do it with uh, by window with natural light. And I always recommend try not reading on your phone. We hold our phones extremely close. Okay. Um, so if you can try to project anything you need to read for extended periods of time on a device that's a little further away, it's going to be easier on your eye muscles. So you're saying a larger device so you can hold it a little bit further away from your face. Is that it? Yeah, exactly. Oh. And then for those, uh, for those those things that we can't control, if you do think that myopia is progressing, we have treatment options. Um, it's uh, treatment options called myopia management or myopia control, which I practice at my office. Okay, I know there's drops that are available for dry eye. There's specific lenses that can be fitted as well. Yeah, so for myopia control, for younger kids, we look at a special prescription drop that's dosed once every night called low dose atropine. Um, and for uh, the uh, glasses, where there's actually a new glasses design that was released this summer in Canada that I fit with uh, a lot of patients in my practice and they've adapted really well. What do you think um, of those blue glasses that claim oh, to blue help? Blue light glasses, you know, they can be hit and miss for people in terms of helping reduce eye strain. We definitely know they help uh, regulate circadian rhythm so you can get to sleep better, but it can be hit and miss for eye strain. I find patients who have migraine or headache history, they often do really well with transition lenses, which are the, the ones that are clear indoors and turn dark uh, outside. That limits blue light and protects against UV. Um, but I also find, uh, you know, for screens, you can always check to see if uh, the flicker rate um, is a little bit too low on your screens. You can always look for um, gaming computer monitors and or flicker-free screens. They usually help reduce any um, eye strain. Dr. Ko, thank you so much. Great tips. Where do we find more online? Uh, you can go to my website. It's specsandspines.com. Um, I also have a link to the myopia management section of my practice called orthoktoronto.com. 
Um, but I've got lots of good advice there, and you can always reach out to your local optometrist as well. Including getting outside. Thank you so much, which is where we are heading right now. Consider it a virtual view, a virtual window, if you will, friends. Nicole is enjoying that fresh air, as the doctor just said. It's good for your eye health on top of everything else, Nick, so enjoy it. She's coming up right after this.